roadies thanks for stopping by this will not be a big long video as I have a full day of things to do places to be <laughs> yeah right well today is my um, uh, venture out to shopping and the post office so I do have those um, two items to do I do one usually at the most twice a week because of the mail and um, and then groceries but other than that we're staying put we, we plan on being part of the um, flattening of that continue to flatten that curve continue to save all be a part of the saving of all my quote roadie friends yeah that's what we plan to do so First of all, I'm going to just tell you, just so you know, because I know I get questions about it. This is a slimline light. It's a touch, uh, touch to turn on and off. It is totally flexible and moves out of the way. It's awesome. It provides a very, very clear daylight. And so um, I got that from the Stitch and Post here in Sisters. And I, I really, really do love this. It's my favorite, favorite light. I keep it here in the beehive because I need the most light here. It is going to be a great week weather-wise. The mountains are out. They are awesome. The sun is out. And it's supposed to be by almost 80 by the end of the week yes please we are so ready for that i'm tired of covering my um uh, flower basket i broke down and i bought myself a flower basket um right near our i mean two blocks from us is a nursery and uh, it's open air and it's a family run little uh, it's a small nursery but uh, they got in their flower baskets and so I picked one up on my way home from the grocery store last week which meant I had to cover it every night this week because we got into the 20s some nights yes yes two oh 20s but now our weather is starting to pick up a little bit, which I'm very much looking forward to. <sighs> yeah. Something about the sunshine just makes one's spirit rise. Yes. So today is just an update video. I wanted to come over and show you that I finished this row. This row six of the Edita Sitar Tannenbaum quilt. And now I'm going to take it off of the design wall because <laughs> that row, I'm here to tell you, uh, this particular quilt challenges me in um, a way that might be the same as if you wanted to learn a foreign language. I have to literally lay out all the pieces next to my sewing machine and then sew them together and put them back down because I somehow can't quite visualize the whole thing unless it's totally laid out. Um, and I pick the colors out that way because it's very, very scrappy. It's very cute, but I know that now one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, next row, row seven, and then I think there is a correction to row eight. So this next week um, that we're starting, probably later in the week, I will um, take it back out and then sew row seven. So this quilt is moving along. I plan to have it done and quilted and bound before Christmas this year. It's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. So for those of you that are working on it or have finished it, congratulations if you finished it. <laughs> it is so pretty. And I'll show you a picture 
of the completed quilt. There we go. I spent all day in the beehive yesterday rocking out to music. Yeah. I, um, I needed a day where I just didn't have to think. You know, I didn't, um, I just wanted to sew, escape, and not think about the world. And so I put on my Pandora radio. I didn't even want to listen to book. I, I didn't want to watch any of my favorite floss tube channels. I just wanted music to rock to. And I danced away while I sewed and pressed. So now this one's going back in the closet for a little while. Just for a couple more days. So yesterday, after I finished my row, I worked on backings. I have a pile of quilts to quilt. I'm not going to be able to quilt them all, so I've chosen the quilts that I would rather um, have a long arm quilter uh, quilt. And the thing about it is that if I had easy access to fusible batting, because that's what I use. I use fusible batting. Because my knees and my back and my neck and my shoulders, you know, I've broken my shoulder, so um, I'm, I'm not capable of doing the whole pinning of the layers together in order to quilt. But I do love to quilt. It's a whole other facet to my, my quilt loadies world. But because I can't readily get fusible batting, I'd have to order it, I'd have to wait for it to come, you know, where I just as soon go in and buy it, you know. And I like the Hobbs 8020 fusible batting, and I usually have several of those, but all I have right now are the baby quilt size. So I'm sending, I decided what I was going to send out to the long arm, and before anyone gets upset about long arms not being essential service, this is, um, I am blessed in that my long arm people are basically, I have three long arm people in walking distance of my house. So when I go out to the grocery store, the process that I do is that I have my um, quilt top and backing in a plastic bag and I drop it on the front porch and then I get a call about you know sometimes to discuss what I might like to have done but rarely really do I have a vision <laughs> for my quilting I I think long arm quilting really is its own art form and most I have never I have to say, I have never been disappointed with what I got back. And so I am picking up the t-shirt quilt. So that will be a binding project for this week. And I am dropping off another quilt. And so this, I'll just show you what I'm dropping off. I'm not going to unfold them, but I have this backing. And this is, it's got to be queen size, tumbling blocks, a queen size tumbling blocks. Yes, it is amazing. And I will show you the whole thing when it is quilted and I have to put the binding on it. So, um, yeah, uh, I'm excited to get that to the quilter. And then the second one is a class I took years ago at Quilter's Affair. And yes, I'm still grieving about Quilter's Affair. I think it will take me a while to uh, get over my grief. Uh, it might be one of those things that until next year when we have the do-over. 
Um, I'll still have a little bit of heartache about it. But this was a class uh, that I took at uh, Quilter's Affair with Sarah Filkey from Australia. And um, it was alphabets. And so um, I have a birthday coming up uh, for a little person pretty soon. And so I wanted to get this alphabet quilt done. And I'm not going to totally... But it's, it's the full alphabet, small, lowercase, uppercase. And so I thought, this is, it's about time to get this quilted. And so I dug through my stash, and I found two pieces of fabric that I sewed together um, that I thought would be fun to be on the back. So it's not like, um, it's not a designer back. And uh, one was this yardage that I bought years ago of Dick and Jane. Isn't that fun? Dick and Jane. And then I also had um, a, a yardage of Snoopy's, the Peanuts characters. So I, to uh, I sewed those two pieces together for the back of this. And I'm going to drop that off on the front porch. So that's going to feel good. And then I have some uh, machine applique that I'm going to do. Um, that will be on my list for this week. I am looking forward to that. And I, I might get, uh, well, no, I won't be quilting uh, on my Sweet 16 till I uh, make the baby quilt. And I, we have three babies due this year in our family. Wow, three, how fabulous, how fabulous that is. And so, um, just a really invigorating time in uh, the Beehive. I, I think the music really helped. I mean, I was listening to Ed Sheeran and Justin Timberlake, and oh, I just was, uh, I think I got exercise actually because I was dancing all around the beehive while I was looking for stuff and picking stuff up and folding it and yeah so you can tell I am back in the beehive yes so where am I heading as far as um my wool and piecing what's the next thing I need to get done well let me show you I'm going to be putting it up on the design wall um, <clears throat> while we talk. Now this was a project that I've been working on for a while. Buttermilk Basins, Autumn Harvest. I would love to have that done before this autumn. Right. And I know that um, when I was in Arizona I, was, I cut out all of the pieces for the piecing parts of it because if you notice on the pattern it's a combination of pieced blocks and wool stitchery blocks and I cut out all the pieces when I was down in Arizona I have not finished all of my wool stitching but I am very close I am very, very close, and so I'm going to just put it up here on the design wall to kind of give me some inspiration. My little, my little bee, my little bee um, needle minder um, makes this piece kind of heavy. the center block. Now I think I, I don't have a whole lot of uh, wool stitching to finish to get this one going. So let's see what's done. People have asked me about this design wall. <laughs> I love this design wall, but literally 
it looks better on the front than on the back because what we did, what um, G and I did was we went down to Home Depot and we bought two panels of insulation. You know, that kind that has the silver and the pink in the center. And we bought two pieces of that. Then I went to Walmart and I um, bought several yards of very reasonable cream colored flannel. And um, I literally, literally duct taped it on the back side of this. And then G took two strips of just very, like, um, it must be like two inch by quarter or half inch boards, um, trim kind of boards, and we duct taped those to the back and left a little lip at the top, which he then screwed into the wall at the top where you can't see that part. So it was an easy, easy design wall. Now my favorite, my absolute favorite design wall is um, Jean Wells. Oh, I love her design wall. Her design wall is several doors, uh, top to bottom closet doors that are like barn doors. They are on sliders and they are, uh, they have a felt or a cotton flannel on the front. And so when she pushes those doors, she can see her stash, but the doors are the design wall, which I think is absolute genius. Absolute genius. Let's see. Wanna, these blocks are on the heavier side, so I might give them a little bit of help with um, some pins in them. This little guy looks like. the wagon for this quilt because I was grieving. Yeah, I started worrying about the quilt show and Quilter's Affair like back at the beginning of March. Um, and so I just started worrying about it and I was so excited for this year because Stacy West, who is the the art heart behind Buttermilk Basin was going to be um, one of our teachers for the first time at Quilters Affair. We were going to have uh, one of our primitive wool teachers here and I was so excited about it. And it was going to be so much fun for so many people who love her designs. And so when I started worrying, I stopped stitching this because I was just like, oh, what are we going to do? Okay, so let's see. I think I need to, yeah, this has to go out here. And this has to go out here. But now, you know, I know what's ahead. I know 
know that that we're going to be having a party in 2021 and so and for sure this will be done by then <laughs> yeah for sure this will be done oh that's so cute Isn't that cute? Boy, that's cute. Okay, all the wool blocks are up there. some wool stitching to do and you will you know if you've been wool stitching with me for a while you know that all of these are backed with SF 101 and I use soft fuse to put the pieces down so like this piece here is not stitched yet but all the pieces are there and ready and if by chance something starts to lift up because you know I travel with this this I started this over a year ago and uh, so if something starts to lift you can either staple it in place and then the staple remover will just take that right back out without any problem or I stitch that as the next next piece I'm gonna stitch I tend to stitch all those red berries first because I don't want to lose any berries or leaves but these three blocks are done the two acorn blocks are done this block is done. The autumn block is done. Mr. Pumpkin Man is done. And the center block is done. So I have these sashing blocks to do. And yeah, so that's where I was working next was I I believe when I was in Arizona, I um, prepped these sashing blocks and got them ready. And I know, as I always do, I am going to somehow personalize this. So I left the door blank here, um, deciding what I want to do, whether I put uh, an address number or the our name or something. I'll I will pull, personalize this in some way to our family. But I just think that is such a fun quilt. So I have the four corner blocks are pieced. Um, might be Lemoyne stars. I'm not sure. And then there's four corner blocks here that are um, like Ohio stars. And then there's all the sashing. And the sashing is half square triangles. And I know I had not decided whether I was going to do those half square triangles or whether I was going to just do uh, plain sashing. I hadn't decided that yet. So, yeah. Gosh, it looks awesome, doesn't it? I'm going to give you a little bit of a close-up look to it um, so that you can maybe get a, a little peek. So... Yeah, that is going to 
going to be an absolutely stunning quilt. Now that I see it back up there, I just, I can't wait. I can't wait to get back into it. Oh. I dropped one block. Let's see. I just wanna, I'm going to leave this up for a while because um, it will give me encouragement to get it going. Yeah, I had all my Baldani threads um, here, and um, it was all ready for travel, all ready for travel. So I did a lot of stitching on the road, but now I need to be stitching in the home, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so I can tell, now that I have that up, I'm going to be like a dog with a bone. I'm going to want to get that going. So I think the rest of this week, I will make all the pieced blocks. And then um, finish off the stitching. Yeah, let's see, how many of these sashing... I, yeah, I have all four of these sashing blocks to do still, but that'll go fast. Yeah, because everything else is stitched. It just needs a little bit of embellishments. And I want to I want to make more masks for G and I. Um, I want to have a. Um, a couple for each of us in in the van, in Penny, and then in the truck or car, so that if we spontaneously are someplace where we need the mask, we have one available, and then we can wash them when we get home. And and the ones that I've made have been great. I just put them in, you know those. Um, I put the masks in those zipper bags that you put delicates in. Uh, in the washing machine. I put them in there so that they don't get all tangled up. And and they've come out of the wash and dryer just perfect. I even dry them in those zipper bags. Yeah. It's kind of exciting. It's kind of exciting. I find that when I sew to music, it's like, oh my gosh, that was invigorating. Um, but I like to have... Um, you know, I'll have my laptop up here on the sewing table right over here if I'm sewing. And I'll watch um, Floss Tube or um, I'll watch some uh, Netflix or TV. But rarely do I watch TV up here. Mostly just um, Floss Tube. Because <laughs> you know I'm addicted to cross stitch too. I don't even know how that happened. And it was so lucky because when I was up here yesterday sewing, my um, younger grandson FaceTimed me. And he was uh, laying on the couch with his dad. And he likes to see things. And so I took the phone around the room and talked about all the little things that I have decorated in this uh, sewing beehive. And he just loved looking at all my stuff. Stuff. <laughs> it was so fun. <laughs> it is so fun. So I'm going to let you go. Thank you for stopping by. I, I, I feel amazingly motivated because now that I have talked out loud what's going on, it's like I get invigorated. And so when I read your comments on what you're working on or um, how you're feeling, and let me tell you, 
If you get a chance, go through and read some of those comments. There are people that need our love and support, and there are people with a lot of fantastic ideas. <laughs> And that's what we're all about, because we are a community. We are a community of quilters and stitchers. And this is what, this is what keeps us sane. Let me tell you, this is what keeps us sane. So we'll see you the next time around. Thank you for stopping by. And be safe. Wear your mask when you're in public, because now that we're reopening, we have to see what what the rebound is and it's even a more dangerous time because there was so much of it out there to begin with and we started to control it and now we're opening back up ever so slightly and so there'll be um, a chance for a rebound so wear your mask wash your hands I know you know your mother told you that and we'll see you here the next episode. Don't go! Don't go! I forgot! I forgot to tell you! We have a giveaway! Yes! Oh my gosh! I can't believe I forgot! I... I asked G, I said, where are we in Quilt Roadie Land? And he said, we went over 18,000. 18,000 of you. Oh, thank you so much for hanging out with me. But that 18,000 means we have to have a giveaway. And so the giveaway is going to be a $50 gift card to the Stitchin' Post here in Sisters, Oregon. Yes, they have a great online presence. And so what I want you to tell me is um, the Stitch and Post will be um, the word that the random generator will look for. So be sure that you use the Stitching Post in your comment. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered this. You know, I almost spent this card myself, but yeah. So, I hope you all win. Somebody out there's got to win. And thank you, thank you for, for hanging out with G and I on the Quilt Roadies. Okay, now you can go. Thanks for watching. And be sure to like and subscribe on Quilt Roadies.